Good evening, everyone, um, or good afternoon, or good morning, wherever you are. Um, it's good to be back at the Marketplace Conference, uh, this time without a jet lag, for a change. Um, so my name is Ovidiu Solomonov. I head Global Markets and Ventures at Adelinda. Uh, now, my topic for the next 20 minutes is basically how the COVID crisis could push us forward. Um, and I'm going to be very, very brief on COVID. Uh, I think we were he all hearing uh, a lot about it. Um, you know, we can probably agree that it's, it's the biggest health crisis in generations and it's the worst economic recession in decades. Now, in Romania, we have a saying that a kick in the butt is a step forward. So I'll focus the rest of the presentation on the steps forward coming out of this. Uh, first, a quick intro. So Adevinta is one of the leading marketplace operators in the world. Uh, have a global footprint in 16 countries uh, based out of Barcelona. Uh, we're doing roughly 1.5 billion visits a month. And with 700 million euros in revenue yearly, we're probably the largest operator, marketplace operator in Europe. So we're, we're doing both horizontals and verticals. Um, in the verticals, real estate, motor, and jobs are the main ones. Now, um, Adevinta was born last year, right? So we, we IPO the company in 2019, uh, but we were born with the corporate uh, venture capital arm, right? So we, we had started Adevinta Ventures in, in 2018. Uh, in the meantime, so in these two years, we, we've done seven investments. So three in funds as LPs and four directly in companies. And I'll, I'll touch a bit on them later. Uh, pretty simple investment thesis. Uh, so investing in concepts, products, which are remaking our verticals, namely uh, real estate, motor, jobs, um, focused on the European footprint largely um, and looking to contribute beyond money. Right? So helping with content, traffic, you know, tech, knowledge, marketing, whatnot. Um, actually, we, we had the good news two days ago where one of our portfolio companies, Medwing, has raised a 28 million Series B. So it's, it's good to see deals happening even in this environment. Um, we've also been working quite a lot with Dealroom in preparing a yearly marketplace report. And I think the next installment will be out next week. So I definitely encourage you to check it out. Quite a lot of the findings in this presentation uh, come from there. Now, um, what, what's going on with this crisis, right? So what, what sort of changes does it drive? Um, I think it's, it's not exhaustive. These are, you know, there are four segments that I'm particularly excited about. Um, so I think we can agree that it, it, what it does, it, it, it accelerates digitization and user adoption. Right? So trends that were, are already there now are, are put on steroids. Uh, and, and we're moving to what's called, let's say, the, the low touch economy. Now, of, of the four segments, the first one um, is how we learn, right? And, and it was really cool to see how you know, we had this massive shift from um, kind of physical classroom to Zoom classes, right? And then kids learning to skip classes on Zoom, right? So it's, it's a big change in, in mindset and culture that happened in two months. So remote is, is one clear driver in learning. The other one is kind of digitizing and atomizing content, right? So we're moving from four year long degrees towards classes and courses, right? So much more granular. And the last trend there is around applied knowledge. Right? So it's not theoretical stuff. It's mostly things which will help you, uh, you know, increase your earning power, get a better job and whatnot, so closer to the job market. On how we shop, Again, the obvious one is the shift to online. And it's really exciting to see what's happening, for instance, in groceries, right? Where historically the barrier was user adoption, right? Uh, so yeah, I, I don't want to buy my apples online because I, I don't know if I'm going to get good apples. Now, increasingly now, the, the barrier is fulfillment and logistics, right? So the question is, when am I going to get my case of apples or veggies or whatnot, right? So, user adoption is there and logistics needs to scale up to, to deliver. And linked to it, it's basically the, the integration between online and offline, right? And I think by now it's clear that um, Amazon-grade logistics are mandatory. 
Uh, and we see that in, in other Intas, we're doing transactional, uh, you know, we have transactions in, in quite a few of our marketplaces, right? So in Le Bon Coin, France, in Spok, in the UK, in Neofogash, in Hungary. And the, the user traction is, is super strong, right? So they're, they're asking for it. And the third part on, on how we shop is around discovery, right? So as the journeys move online, solving for discovery is going to be much more important, right? So not just where do I buy it, but what should I buy? Um, on how we live, again, two interesting points. One on this massive experiment in working from home, right? And it seems to, to have worked, right? So productivity is there and it, it might become, I'm not going to say the new normal, right? So not, not all companies are going to go the Twitter way, uh, but much more pervasive for sure. Um, and the other part is on people kind of rediscovering hobbies and, uh, and whatnot, right? So one, one interesting anecdote for Aust from Austria, so it, it was among the first countries in Europe to open up after the lockdown. And we were very keen to see, you know, you, we were watching the numbers and see what, like, what, what's consumer spending doing, where, wh where are they going, where's the money going, right? And the biggest queues were in front of DIY stores. And so people are rediscovering their home and, and keen to tweak it and improve it and so on. So that, that, that's the other interesting aspect on, on how we live. Um, and then the last one is, is around travel, which I think is, you know, you look at it with, with a zoomed out view and it's, it's, it's facing big headwinds. I think there are, there are tailwinds with, underneath that, uh, that overview. I think people want to get out. And so after you know, 10 weeks indoors, they want to travel and they will largely be traveling locally and rurally. Right? So in their region, and in places where they're not going to meet that many people, right? And we're very bullish on camping. So we're, we're invested in um, one of the largest camping camper van marketplaces in Europe, Paul Camper. And over the past several weeks, we've, we've seen amazing pickup in demand, right? So it's, it's validated by the, by the data. Now, before I get deeper into the segments, one, one thought on, on marketplaces themselves, right? So they, they've been around for, for ages. Um, I think it's, it, they're amazing concepts, right? So marketplaces are, are creating trust and transparency in interactions with many buyers and many sellers, right? Uh, so you, you have many people uh, selling and buying something and the, the best way to match and create that, uh, that trust and remove that friction is with the marketplace. Now, with digitization, what we're seeing is that many exchanges are moving from one to many towards many to many. So back to the education example, right? So you get a college degree, that's a one-to-many bundle, right? So the same four-year program, whatnot. Um, when you move into courses and skill acquisition, that's a many-to-many -many play. That, that's, a, that's a marketplace uh, business model right there. So I'm you know, I, paraphrasing a bit Mark Andreessen, I think marketplaces will eat the world, right? So as journeys, user journeys get digitized, marketplaces will become much more prevalent. Uh, and I think, some sectors are going to be more impacted than others, which brings me to the next one. Um, so this is from the deal room report that will be published next week, right? Um, the interesting bit, so if you look at the larger sectors in the economy, so look at housing, healthcare, education, um, less than 10% is digital. And so more, more than 90% of, of that uh, value creation happens offline. Right? So you put you put together large segments with a huge offline chunk and the COVID crisis that keeps people indoors. And right there, you, you have that shift of behavior, that digitization. This is, these, these are the segments which are ripe for the new marketplaces to come up. Now, granted, it's, it's not easy, right? So you have segments where it's relatively easier to execute, um, such as education, right? Where it's you know, digitizing content is more straightforward and distributing it uh, versus housing where, you know, being such a large purchase, people would still want to see the house before, before committing to, to buy it, right? Uh, however, even there, I think there are, there are nuances, right? So you're starting to see eye buyers. I think in rentals, there is a clear opportunity for a fully digital user journey. So getting deeper into, into real estate. Um, what we're seeing is that the, the house, we're, we're rediscovering our houses, right? So we've been spending 10 weeks at home. You know, now I know that the light is not good. You know, my, my chair is not comfortable enough for eight hours of, uh, of Zoom conference. So I, I'm, I'm rediscovering this environment. Um, 
I'm starting or people are starting to work from home much more or considering it. Um, and then it's changing what people look for. And this is, you know, we're already seeing it in the data. So people are looking for more space, more space indoors. I, I need to have a, an office somewhere because I might work from home and more space outdoors, a terrace, a garden, because I might be locked down and I want to see the sun. Right? And we're seeing this, this spike in demand in houses around big cities. Uh, I think the other interesting trend in, in real estate is it's a big financial commitment. Right? So it's for many people, it's their biggest purchase. You know, it's a mortgage or, over several you know, decades. Um, and then they're reluctant to make that commitment in times of crisis when income is unclear. Right? So we're seeing an increase demand for flexibility, i.e. rentals. Right? So rentals are picking up much, much faster. Which gets me to rentals. Um, this is, it's a really interesting category, right? So my, I would say that for rental, trust is even more important than for buying and selling a house. Right? So buying and selling is a one-off event, right? You, 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 you do one transaction and trust is usually outsourced, right? So to the notary that checks the papers, to your architect friend that visits the house and says, yes, it's not going to crumble. Now, Rental is an ongoing relationship, right? So it's months, years, um, and it, it can significantly impact one's life, right? So if that relationship is not good, then, then you have a problem. And so solving for trust is even more important in, in rentals. Um, now, in, in Europe, we've seen rentals are around 20% of the transactions, except for Germany, which is at 50%. Um, and we've seen that share steadily increase and, you know, we have this whole generation rent. So the younger generation is not owning and so on. That is being significantly accelerated now by the crisis, right? So we have much more demand for, for rentals. And then if you look at the value chain solving for that problem, it's very patchy, right? So you have uh, classifieds solving discovery. Then you have players solving for deposits, right? So we're, we're invested in Flatfed in the UK. You know, they have a, a pretty cool solution uh, around deposits. But increasingly, there is a need for an end-to-end -end solution, right? So solving discovery visits, transaction deposit maintenance. And we're seeing the, the example, one of the examples on the screen is actually Quintondar, which is a Brazilian player who does exactly that, right? So they're, they're solving for discovery, cool photos in app, whatnot. You can book the visit in the app. You do the transaction in the app. There is no need for a deposit because they, they figured out the risk scoring um, and, and they're organizing the maintenance as well. Right? And this is not only removing friction, it's also increasing the time. Right? So it's, it's a really good opportunity. Now, from our ventures perspective, we've been looking for the European version of Quintondar for a while now, um, and we're still looking, so not, not there yet. Um, next, work. So again, some, some obvious trends under the you know in, in the work uh, space so one is companies turning to automation right so automation in order to you know you, uh, reduce cost increase flexibility so your you know your labor force is more expensive if you need to reshore your labor force is stuck at home so you need to to remove some of the dependency uh, and the complication is that the jobs getting automated are the ones which are less skilled obviously right so less unique which creates an even stronger social problem. Um, that's on the company side. On the candidate side, we're, we're seeing two things, right? So one is a need for interim solutions. So gig economy, passion economy, and also ways to make a living. Um, and the other one is a clear uh, push towards reskilling. Right? So acquiring new skills to make people more relevant uh, in the workplace. Uh, and now to reskilling, because I think this is, you know, for us, it, it's a particularly important part of the thesis. Um, so it, it used to already be important, uh, right? So three years ago, I think McKinsey was saying that 14% uh, of the workforce needed to be reskilled. Uh, so already big and growing. Now, you put on top of that 20 to 30% unemployment, and then you have a big uh, economic and social problem and a huge opportunity on your hands, right? And that's where we're seeing the emergence of full stack solutions. And so solving um, reskilling with placement into one, uh, into one bundle, right? So basically identify high potential individuals, train them, teach them a valuable skill, 
place them in the workforce and make money with an income share agreement, right? So they make money, you make money. Pretty cool end-to-end, -end, you know, removing quite a lot of friction and really interesting unit economics, right? Uh, and we're seeing Lambda School in the US doing that, you know, teaching coders and bringing them into the workforce. And again, Medwing, our own, uh, our, our portfolio company, it's, it is the leading healthcare marketplace in Europe. Um, and you know they're increasing supply, right? So nurses is a, is a really scarce resource. And on the supply side, they're bringing more supply into the market, either by providing flexibility, right? So the hours that one can work or the locations that one can work, or literally bringing nurses, you know, from the Philippines to Germany, right? So bringing them, training them, and, and placing them at hospitals. And that that's that's a really good business. It's a really good social impact as well. Uh, now the last the last segment dive, if you want, is on on financing, right? So um, I think in, in in these times of crisis, financial inclusion is even more critical, right? So uh, the crisis is impacting finances, especially of the people at the lower end of the income pyramid, right? So people that are already uh, hurt, right? Uh, like more than forty percent of the people don't have savings or have seen them wiped out with the crisis, right? So they don't have money in the bank. Uh, income has been shrunk. Uh, people need to take on debt. Now, the opportunity is on the on the digital finance side, right? So, as, as kind of traditional banks are are overwhelmed with loan applications and whatnot, government grants and so on, uh, digital finance can acquire a lot of sticky long term users, right? And now I think the the way it might play out between uh, traditional banks and digital finance is is on several parameters, right? So, on speed. We have a clear advantage on the digital side, right? So it's days versus weeks or months on the other side. Uh, on social distance, clear win on digital finance side, right? So you, you, in, in most of these cases, you don't need to see anyone. Right? So everything's in an app. On risk scoring, the jury is out, right? So you have digital finance, you know, the you know, whiz kids, data scientists, brainiacs, you know, big data culture. So a, a lot of potential there. Whereas on the traditional banking side, you have a lot of a lot of historical data and already trained model. And I think this last point will probably drive the industry dynamic, right? So I think in 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 one, two years' time, we will see if if the scaling in the dig, in, in digital finance is sustainable and is with good unit economics, right? So basically depending on the on the default rate and the quality of the risk score. So I think on that one we're we're watching closely and the jury is out. Um, from a marketplace's perspective, how do we look at, at, at fintech, right? So there are a lot of smart people that are bullish uh, fintech, right? So uh, I think Pitt Flint was, was at the marketplace conference last year, you know, saying that the money is in the money. Uh, Andreessen Horowitz has a thesis that, you know, every company will be a fintech company. So I'm, I'm obviously not going to disagree with that. Um, our own point of view at Adelinta is we're seeing financing as the biggest hurdle in uh, in generating the transactions in the verticals, right? In housing, in motor, access to finance is the biggest drop-off point. And that, that's starting to be solved, right? So again, income sharing agreements uh, around education and labor, iBuyers in housing, right? So we, we invested into one of the leading iBuyers in Europe. We're, we're watching closely that, that space. From a marketplace operator perspective, it's really difficult to build internally that capability. And so getting into fintech is complicated, right? So it, 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 it's not standardized, it's, it's, it's really tricky. Um, so we're definitely looking out to see if there are modular building blocks out there, if, if, there, you know, if fintech as a service is starting to emerge as a thesis, and that, that's something that would be key now. Um, last slide, it's not, you know, it, it's, it's not my dessert for tonight, it's actually a, a, a more philosophical thought, right? So if Marketplaces are, are amazing concepts at removing friction. Right? So you create enormous value by, you know, in, 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 uh, in transactions with many buyers, many sellers. Now, not all friction is worth removing. And that, this is my lockdown reflection, right? So um, I discovered in these 10 weeks of lockdown that I can order a kilo of ice cream at the touch of a button, right? And in 15 minutes, it's at my door. Now, short term, amazing sugar rush, super exciting, right? Long term, I'm, I'm checking my waistline and it's not good. Um, and it's definitely not good for the environment either. 
So one reflection to the founders in the audience is you know it's cool be bold you know take these big marketplace opportunities in these large segments but please also focus on the friction that is worth removing um thank you that was it just please don't forget to get in touch so if you're working in any of these spaces get in touch at ventures at adelinka.com and now hopefully we have some time for q a Jeroen, organizer, what's your take on the future of education? And more in particular, is there a future for universities or will all, all of these ultimately be disrupted? And I'm, I'm, I'm really bullish on education. I think it's the big one coming up. Right? So it, it's easy to digitize. Um, it's big. Um, I, I think increasingly the bundles will go away. Uh, so if you look at the university degree as a one big bundle, you know, um, serving everyone i think that will increasingly go away fragmented into uh you know skill acquisition right? so uh, narrower um, areas helping people get better jobs so i i don't want to go on record saying hey universities are dead in five years i think there is something about that brand power but i think degrees as we know them and you know front loading education at the beginning of the professional life right? so you do four years of education and then you work for 30 years that's not going to happen anymore. Martina, do you think this will make people appreciate technology even more or the opposite? We will see uh, how bigger role personal interactions play in our life now that we don't have them as much. I, I, I don't know. I think, you know, every, every generation had its, uh, its Luddites or how, however you pronounce it correctly in, in, in English. Um, I think in, in general, I, my, my personal view is that, you know, the progress on the technology front is inexorable, right? So it's, it's, it is adding to, our, to the quality of our lives. Now, it doesn't mean that we should all live virtual lives. And I think short term, you know, th there will be a boom of people going out and meeting people. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I live in Barcelona, I see it. Right? So this is the Mediterranean culture. The moment uh, you know, the government said you can go out, everybody's on the streets. Um, but I think some of the digital trends are, are very sticky and will stay. Um, Stuti, follow from Yerun. To digitize education, will you need to have a big brand already at Harvard, MIT? What are the other important dimensions? Therefore, will only the top percent of university be in? I don't think so. So I think this is, and again, it's a personal view, right? So I think it will erode the power of the big brands, right? Because in the end, if you look at what drives these end-to-end -end, um, concepts, a la Lambda School, or even you know boot camps and so on, is the percentage of people that they successfully place. And so it's a hard number. It's not a brand, right? It's not something, yeah, I was at Harvard or Stanford or whatnot. It's look, did I get a job? Is the job paying more than 50K? And then the, the incentives are very aligned, right? So Lambda School makes money only if you make more than 50K. Now they're, they're damn well incentivized to make sure you succeed, right? Whereas Harvard and others, you know, make money from donations. So the alignment is not as, as, as obvious. Uh, so I would say a dilution in brand power for sure. Uh, down to irrelevance, probably not very soon. Peter, what's your take on the used products market on classifieds platform? Do you think that peer-to-peer -peer transaction will become less attractive to a lot of people? Man, I th if I could place a question, it would be that one, right? So we're, we're running uh, C2C marketplaces, again, so Spock in the UK, Le Bon Point in France. We actually, we saw an amazing boom in C2C transactions, right? So. The moment we did door to door, right, because initially transactions can be, uh, to oversimplify, can be box to box, right, so post office to post office, and then last mile seller and buyer do it themselves, or door to door. We did door to door in, in Spok in the UK over a, a weekend, right, because it was obviously needed, and then it, it, it shot up. And so people, uh, people are, are very keen on that. And in the end, you, know, you, you take the good home, you wash it well, you put some disinfectant, and then it, it's still a good deal. Uh, people are realizing how, how much stuff they have in their homes and are, are starting to monetize it. Uh, so on our platforms, literally, we're seeing all-time highs now on most of our platforms. Last question, probably, right? Um, I, I saw Javier's question. I'll, I'll skip over it. <laughs> um, Clint. 
how would this digitization of undergrad unis and move towards skill acquisition affect the pipeline to grad schools? Short term, I don't know. I, I think on, on, on the long term, um, again, I, I think it would move much more towards you know, con uh, concrete skill acquisition. Uh, skill acquisition relevant in the context of the job market. Right? So uh, in, in medicine, it's probably more complicated. Thank you.